Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. Why is it New Year's Eve? Because it's the eve of the church year. We're about ready to enter into Advent. And over the last couple of weeks, we've been reflecting on the end of times. Jesus Christ has been inviting us to realize that we're not going to be here forever. We're not made for this place. And in fact, this place is made for an eternal place. We will all live eternally. And it's up to us to kind of choose which place we want to spend eternity. Uh, in any event, I'm taking a little bit of time here to share with you um, a reflection that was really challenging to me. I wish I could turn the camera around and keep it going. I don't know how to do that. So, um, But I'm reading the book by Ralph Martin, The Fulfillment of All Desire. And in this book, it's just a marvelous um, articulation of what the great saints uh, understood in the journey to eternity, if you will. Just great quotes and just um, assembled in such an awesome way to connect with our purpose here on earth, our humanity, and God's desire for us to be with him forever. And in the midst of this rather thick book, um, all of which is compelling, by the way, you should get it, The Fulfillment of All Desire by Dr. Ralph Martin. Um, he um, shares a quote by St. Bernard, who gives, it's a little longer, I'm going to read it here, but he shares a picture of the downward spiral that can happen when we cease to make um, strong commitments to connect with God, when we cease to be faithful to everyday, ordinary, orienting our hearts and our minds to God. It begins there, and he describes the downward spiral. And I thought it was really challenging. I thought it was very worthwhile for me personally, and what I see uh, challenging of people in my life and in the world around us. So here we go. This is by St. Bernard. If this cold once penetrates the soul, when, as so often happens, the soul is neglectful and that spirit asleep, and if no one is there to curb it, then it reaches into the soul's interior, descends to the depths of the heart and the recesses of the mind. It paralyzes the affections, obstructs the paths of counsel, unsteadies the light of judgment, fetters the liberty of the spirit, and soon as appears to bodies sick with fever, a rigor of the mind takes over. Vigor slackens. Energies grow languid. Repugnance for austerity increases. Fear of poverty disquiets. The soul shrivels. Grace is withdrawn. Time means boredom. Reason is lulled to sleep. The spirit is quenched. The fresh fervor wanes away. A fastidious lukewarmness Weighs down, brotherly love grows cold. Pleasure attracts. Security is a trap. Old habits return. Can I say more? The law is cheated. Justice is rejected. What is right is outlawed. The fear of the Lord is abandoned. Shamelessness finally gets free reign. There comes that rash leap, so dishonorable, so disgraceful, so full of ignominy. I don't know how to pronounce that word. And confusion, a leap from the heights into the abyss, from the courtyard to the dung heap, from the throne to the sewer, from heaven to the mud, from the cloister to the world, from paradise to hell. So, um, not very cheery, but... Great for us to understand if we're struggling with dryness, if we're struggling with maybe a sense of where is God. Now, he allows that to grow closer to him for sure. But consider, are we making the commitments every day for that time of encounter? Because if we're not, our souls are fashioned for him. And this is the sort of thing that happens. It just goes downward to the point where, powerful line in here that really struck me, shamelessness finally gets free reign. And what's the uh, antidote to this? Well, um, awesome, Ralph Martin goes on to articulate that it, it's repentance. That word we may not like so much, but repentance literally means to turn, to make that time again, to acknowledge our sinfulness, which means separation, the ways in which we've separated ourselves from God, to acknowledge those things and literally repent. Great time to go to confession here before we enter into the new year. And as we get into the new year during Advent, and, uh, and particularly to recommit ourselves to daily making that time of encounter. 
That's what we're all about with Mass Impact. We invite you to join us on the great journey. It is a challenge. It is difficult. And uh, it's too easy to exchange uh, blessedness for busyness. So make the time and join us for our Presents for Christmas events. Uh, Find out more at presentsforchristmas.com. Three consecutive weeks prior to Christmas uh, here in the Toledo region um, at St. Joan of Arc, 6.30 p.m. Find out more at presentsforchristmas.com. God bless you.